So after seeing this, you need to ask yourself, do I want these latest features on my portfolio or in my work where recruiters or clients might just experience these glitches or do I go back to some old features that are well tested and tried and just use them in a more creative way? I would definitely vote for the latter. Hi, my name is Peter. I'm a professional web developer and been one for a little over a year now. And in this video series, I'm going over the Udemy courses that helped me land money-making gigs in only six months into my web development journey. Now, why should you listen to me when these courses have been reviewed so many times? Well, most of these people who review these courses are professional web developers and whatever they know of the subject, they haven't learned it from these courses. They're not actual students. They're affiliate marketers whose main purpose is to drive traffic into these courses. So they can't really verify how useful these courses are for beginners or for people new to that particular subject. So today I will be covering the advanced CSS and SaaS Flexbox Creed Animations and More course. It was created by Jonas Schmetmann. I know that I covered uh, his JavaScript course last week, but uh, technically this was the third Udemy course, web development course I've taken, and it makes sense to continue with this one, even if the lineup of the instructors is uh, less exciting, perhaps. A little disclaimer, I have not taken the full course. Uh, you could say that I've taken about 50%, so roughly the half of the course. This course has four parts. The first one is the theory, and then there are three projects. Uh, the first project is a, a brochure site uh, for nature enthusiasts, and this is where uh, SAS is covered, and uh, the principles of uh, modern CSS development. And then there is uh, another project with Flexbox, and there's one with um, CSS Grids. Now, I've known um, Flexbox, or I learned Flexbox and Grid system somewhere else, so I have not taken the time to go through those sections, although in the future I I'll, I'll probably will. Nevertheless, I will show screenshots of those projects as well, so you can get an idea. But we will go into detail regarding the Natus project, the one with the, with the modern CSS development principles. So let's get right into it. So we're on the course landing page. This is where you land uh, before you have purchased the course. Now I'd like to point out that this course is not for beginners. So you will have to have known some sort of CSS and HTML before you jump into this course. So things like positioning, the box model, working with images, a bit of transforms, uh, maybe even media queries. You have to be a little bit familiar with this before you jump into this course otherwise it will be a really steep learning curve for you now let's look at the uh, usual metrics it's a bestseller course 4.8 rating and it's got 20 almost 26,000 ratings and over um, 110,000 students now, this course is also uh, 28 almost 30 hours long now regarding timing obviously before you jump into a course you want to manage your expectations like how long will it take for you to complete the course so I have found that there is a golden ratio of 3 to 1 between how long it will take for you to complete versus how long the course actually is on Udemy so if you have a 10 hour course uh, that will take you about 30 hours so if you have a 10 hour course that will take you 30 hours and you have three hours every day, then it will take you about 10 days to complete that 10 hour course. Uh, so how is the course time calculated or, or why is that? Because Udemy simply adds up the individual lessons. Now, these lessons can be very, very different. Some of these lessons are just plain theory where you just sit back and just, just digest the information. Others are sort of code alongs where you still need to think and, and absorb, maybe even rewatch some of the lessons. You will spend some time debugging, that's for sure. And um, also there are some lessons where, which are quite repetitive and you just need to type. So if you're a quick typer, you, you'll do it faster. But often 
like when they're repetitive tasks for example uh, an order form with a lot of input fields often the instructor just speeds up the video and yet you're left with typing out um, all the all the input fields or labels um, and all the properties etc and then there are for example the challenges where the instructor might just decide this challenge is probably a 15 minute challenge a 20 minute challenge but you might just be sitting there for an hour scratching your head and you can't figure out how to solve it so lessons are very very different but in my personal experience i found them that if you look at the course and it says 30 hours or 10 hours um, you multiply it by three you can roughly estimate um, how long it will take you in your own time so let's look at how the course is built up so you start with the first brochure page project uh, the natus project which i refer to so basically it's a site for nature lovers let me bring it in here so this is the first project you start with you just start it in a normal html and one css file and I think you get kind of the, the hero done before sort of the CSS code will become quite lengthy and it will be time to break it into sort of a more scalable architecture. And this is when uh, modern CSS and SAS will be introduced. So once the hero is done, you will go into the theory part where loads of things are covered um, for example um, cascading specificity inheritance and effective workflow mechanics of css how um, a website is rendered in the browser components uh, the bem model uh, the model that is uh, applied all throughout this first project now you don't need to take notes because jonas provides pdf with all the slides there are over 200 slides in it. I'm just going to give you a very quick glimpse of the quality that it's, it's really, really great quality. So if you just have a look here, it's loads of information. Obviously, I don't want to flag for copyright, so I'm just flashing it up for uh, really quickly. So it's over 200 slides that you can download and, and, and refer to it later. So you literally just need to follow his explanations. Don't need to take any notes. Very easy to follow the course in that respect and then he introduces um, the SAS builder in, in NPM so you basically will have to have a compiler to compile all the different SAS files into one exportable CSS file at the end and then you continue with this project and build the rest everything that's below the hero and the menu so let's just go back quickly what else you have here and just uh, look at all the all the features i mean there's, there's a wealth of um, information here and, and and things you can learn just, if you just reload the page you can see how the page renders um, the button effect the menu with this circular expansion then here you've got obviously uh, these non-rectangular shapes uh, hover effect over pictures buttons then you've got a bit of a pop effect on these cards and then what's also great here look at these flip effects on these cards and once you flip it of course the button does the usual little mm, how would you call it like an explosion effect so it's, it's really really beautiful well designed and 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 a very very thorough uh, css project you've got a, a bit of bit of zoom out and blur effect here on the testimonial page it's actually a background video i'm not sure why it's not running let me just reload it uh, it's not running perhaps it runs in chrome let me bring it up I think it runs in Chrome. Yeah. So it does run in Chrome. Let me minimize this and put them side by side. And then at the bottom, you've got this uh, beautiful input field and input box composition together with the background picture, customized input fields. 
So, I mean, it's, it's a very, very impressive project. So what are all the concepts that are covered in this Natus project? It's basically SCSS, uh, Principles of Responsive Design, the BEM model, which stands for Block, Element and Modifier, um, supporting different browsers, serving the right images for different devices and accounting for pixel density on different phone makes and models, loads of latest CSS features and properties. If you're taking this course to learn the latest CSS features, you're in the right place. If you're taking this course to learn these CSS features and apply it in work or in your own portfolio or for clients, you might be in for some trouble. Why? I mean, you can't expect the average internet user to have the most powerful devices, the best internet connection and the most up-to-date browsers. And some of these new features will be glitchy they will act up and you won't be able to figure out why some of these css properties we learned in the course weren't working for for many students it was working for a lot of them but not for everyone i will show you a couple of examples of these so one of these glitches is 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 the menu glitch so um if you open the menu on chrome and then close it you will see that the menu disappears before um, it circularly retreats uh, so it disappears for one second and then this this circular shrinking happens on Firefox you don't have the same it's very very smooth on Firefox works as it's and as it intended to and this was an issue during the course that for many people uh, this happened that I had on the left on, on the Chrome so they had this glitch I um, I don't have it in Firefox and there was actually no solution to it. And another glitch is uh, when loading, how it's rendered. You're going to see that uh, Firefox is much smoother, while Chrome, you've got some uh, unrendered images flashing up. Um, looks like it, Chrome just takes longer to render, or or it's just not not as a smooth experience. And again, it's not something that you can do much about. Unfortunately, it's just just how it is, how it works. Let me just uh, refresh it so you can see it. You see, there was the menu there. These, um, uh, I think the, these were the testimonial images were flashing up here. And then if you do the same on Firefox, nothing like that. The smooth intro is nicely showing, whereas it's, it's just too glitchy on Chrome. So after seeing this, you need to ask yourself, do I want these latest features on my portfolio or in my work? where recruiters or clients might just experience these glitches or do I go back to some old features that are well tested and tried and just use them in a more creative way I would definitely vote for the latter I've got to show actually the responsivity of uh, the Natus project so let me just quickly go into developers tool and select a uh, this is moto g4 so obviously you've got the um, menu here and everything is responsive uh, the images work on clicking and here these flipping cards are already flipped so obviously you, there's no hovering on a mobile so you wouldn't be able to hover over them there we go moving on to the other two projects the flexbox and the grid projects that are, which i haven't completed but i can show you quick snapshots of it so this is the flexbox project it's like a holiday resort booking page and uh, you've got a nice menu obviously now it's, it's just a picture it's not interactive but if you check out his introductory video he will walk you over how the different features work here again here is not so much the focus and not so much on the actual effects uh, rather using flexbox itself but nevertheless it is quite a beautifully designed page moving on to the gridbox project 
I think it's like a luxury property uh, sales or advertising site, something like that. Beautifully designed, not so many effects. Again, the emphasis is on using grid, the CSS grid system in a very versatile way. Other snapshots from the same page, um, the usual card grid, you can call it. Uh, another card grid with uh, images, uh, responsive images, obviously, and um, image gallery. Again, you've probably seen it on, on social media. Um, and yeah, and that uh, completes the tutorial. So just to recap, again, I'd like to emphasize that I have not taken the full course, only about half of it, but I know Jonas's work. He's a great instructor. I've taken uh, other courses from him so I'm, I'm fully confident that even the sections the flexbox and the grid sections that I have not taken they're, they're also great great value and I would say this that if you're not completely new to CSS you've finished a web development bootcamp and have some um, CSS knowledge um, you just want to sort of understand how really CSS works behind the scenes or want to learn the principles of scalable CSS code architecture or want to learn modern web development and web design best practices or you're just one of the person who just looking at the CSS code and wondering like why is this background color not being applied when, when it's clearly written here so if you're one of these people this course is, is definitely um, useful for you so as always I put the link in the description below again it's just a, a normal link I won't get paid for it so if you're interested in this CSS course click below and start learning